yeah it's fine uh, so we'll just quickly go through the demo of, uh, slides for a few minutes and then just quickly explain what we have covered uh, into that okay so yeah uh, so if we go to our demo session so we uh, discussed dynamics 365 as an erp so all of you know uh, for the erp it's an uh, interpret resource planning and Typically, with an ERP, we all always feel it's an integrated solution. Uh, so it runs all the operations for our business. So let's take an example uh, for for one of our manufacturing company. They are always uh, procuring items, raw materials uh, for manufacturing maybe large scale uh, cars. So let's take an example of Maruti. So they are always having. Uh, uh, so vendors small vendors who are supplying them with uh, car paints seeds uh, the steel uh, was uh, tires and all those things so they are the vendors so then those uh, items they are assembling and they are selling as a finished good which is car uh, the uh, pro team or the maruti as an organization doesn't end there because they have a huge dealership network across the country right and those dealers have their customer system customer relationship management so that's those part if you consider so they have a uh, purchasing team they have a sales team they have a dealership network they have the manufacturing capacity and also they have to maintain their finances also so all these uh, modules different different parts of the business are being handled by one of the of which is the erp what we call so that is the beauty of the erp so if you implement one system it covers all the aspects of your business right it, you don't need to go and implement different different system so that is the purpose and um, mean uh, uh, like reason why big organizations or large organizations are currently going for ERP. So this Dynamics 365 was actually in uh, like is a cloud solution. Previously, uh, we used to call this Accepta, uh, which was an Windows solution. So we need to have our uh, servers. We need to install in the server. We need to install that uh, Dynamics uh, X uh, app as an application. So it's like a, you open open the VM. You then go to the desktop, you access that as a desktop application. So right now, Dynamics 365 is a cloud solution. So anywhere from any machine, from your mobile, from your tablet, from your laptop, you just go type a URL, sign with your Azure credentials, and you are good to go. So that is the change what we have there. So previously it was called AX7. So when Microsoft launched it in 2016, so from 2017, we call it as Dynamics 365. So in Dynamics 365, we have the CRM capacity, which is called Dynamics 365 Sales, uh, which is the CRM, Customer Relationship Management. And we have the ERP capability, which we call Finance and Operations. So kind of the accounting and the reporting part, where we mainly capture our accounting stuff and the reporting stuff. Okay. So yeah, so these two slides actually we covered the evaluation and the, the of the Dynamics product which we compared from the previous three versions 2009-12 and the Dynamics 365 operations. Uh, so uh, mainly the benefits are we have quite a few uh, scalable items right this is like quite scalable because previously dynamics 2009 those are mostly limited to small to mid organization but right now with the advent of dynamics 65 uh, it is scalable because as it is hosted in cloud we do not need to uh, spend our money on the infrastructure microsoft is taking care of that we just need to spend our uh, time and money uh, on a subscription basis like the pay as you go how well the how the subscription model works so how much hours you are using the product uh, it will microsoft will charge you based on that they will take care all the servers uh, all the uh, all the capacity uh, what will be your hardware what will be your software so all this thing microsoft will take care of and yes, if you see the comparison, uh, scalability, uh, integrations, reporting, all these mobile applications, all these are quite enhanced right now with the advent of Dynamics 365 because the integration we have uh, like JSON, so uh, Dynamics 365, Microsoft Flow, all these are uh, very much feasible and very much easily feasible, I would say. 
in Dynamics 365 and also reporting capabilities. So if you see we have SSRS report then we have moved to our Power BI reports which we call our like put enhanced dashboards right what we see those things. So these things are quite uh, quite a um, I would say in the uh, in vogue nowadays so everyone is uh, using these things uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and with microsoft dynamics 365 as everything is hosted on cloud we can easily go and uh, uh, enhance and uh, use those capabilities to our need so one way uh, we might have your mobile development app development is quite easy nowadays because with the advent of power app so right now for every operation small small operation we can create a small app and that app can be deployed uh, to android uh, play store or uh, ios ios store and that can be downloaded by the user and that can be used for a small application so that uh, let's say whoever is uh, into the sales uh, sales and marketing so they those sales people they are uh, continuously moving around the city for for leads and opportunities right so they do not have the time to go and sit in front of a desktop and start working on that so can what they can do they can just simply download a small mobile application they can simply book their time sheet they can simply enter some details of the lead and that will be captured into the crm so those uh, capabilities are quite uh, in use nowadays because this is completely onto the cloud and we do not uh, need to sit in front of a computer just to work on that. So yeah, this is from the technology side and then we uh, talk from the functional side and what is a, a workflow, organization, modeling, finance and compliance. All these things uh, was previously there in 2012 version, which is a middle one, which you are seeing this one, if you compare this one. Uh, but right now, mostly the uh, um, uh, finance and compliance those part have a bit uh, increased or or i'd say the capabilities have increased in dynamics 65 finance and operations right and yeah uh, the, from the selling point of view previously in 2009 and 2012 we only had ax and crm uh, which is called the ax is means the erp part which we write down called finance and operation and crm means the crm which is a, a customer relationship part but with Dynamics 65, the licenses are sold as a complete package. So if you have a Microsoft Office license, then you can have uh, the only the Dynamics uh, CRM license, which is a sales part. Then you can have the service and field service. Or all this comes under the uh, CRM. Also, you can have, if you are only dealing with project, you can buy a license for project also. Or you can buy a license for operations. You know, operations mean the ERP part where we have our supply chain or finance all this are integrated so that part is also quite uh, like i would say enhanced because previously whenever someone uh, goes to microsoft uh, whatever capability or capacity there they had to buy the erp completely which is a dynamic cx but right now they can buy as per they need if they only want to enhance the finance of their uh, business, they can only just go and buy their operations uh, in the finance part, only the finance module. If they want to enhance the supply chain, they can only buy the supply chain. If they want to only implement the uh, customer service and the sales, they can only go and buy the sales and service part. So these capabilities are uh, Microsoft introducing. Okay, so yeah, and uh, these are the things like the architecture we discussed i'll, I'll discuss more uh, tomorrow on this architecture but just to quickly go through that uh, as this is completely hosted on cloud uh, so every all our credential everything is currently maintained is our in our azure active directory this azure active directory is the thing which is controlling all our credentials and all our things so this life cycle services visual studio team service vsts or what we call as devops these terms you will see this uh, this life cycle services is just uh, for maintaining all our environment our uh, development environment testing environment or production environment so all these are maintained by microsoft and this is the place where you can see and maintain all these things and this is our finance and operations app so what the users do quickly i'll go through the process so uh, once you start implementing 
your directory should be in the Microsoft Azure Active Directory AAD what we call AAD it should be you cannot have your local directory or local office directory that is not permissible in Microsoft Dynamics 365 nowadays you have to have an Azure Active Directory under when you create the users in the Azure Active Directory then you have to give them permissions from the office admin center this from Microsoft Office 365 you can open the admin center and you can give the proper permissions for that so you now have one credential under the Azure Active with that credential only you can actually access your LCS so LCS is not accessed by all users but for the admin users maybe from the project managers or the project uh, architect or something right so they will also have the one credential which they can go and access the LCS and also the development architecture or the development team they need to use this VSTS or what we call develop DevOps they will also access DevOps with one credential only which is the AAD access and this is the ERP part or the application part this is also being uh, maintained by uh, the same credential right now after a few months or few years if you try to implement the CRM then there will also be a CRM application here and the credentials will be same so the major part is once you have this credentials ready in the uh, Dynamics 365 uh, as your active directory that one credential single sign on process is applicable to all the applications okay so this is a small part we have discussed from the demo point of view uh, so like now we'll go through the uh, agenda for the today okay so yeah as I was, uh, explaining this part so the will be uh, quickly I will be going through the agenda like what we will be covering uh, these days like the, for the uh, for 25 or 30 hours or uh, the, the, the trainings that we will be covering uh, after that we will be quickly have a first brief introduction on the visual studio how it looks like how the, what is the models and everything the basic part and tomorrow we will continue with that also and also the architecture part and Friday we will we'll show you how to go into the visual studio do some hands on and all these things okay these are the for the next three days two two three days these are the agenda that what we have discussed so let us start on that so yeah uh, so again i have just uh, uh, the, the schedule i have just mentioned like this so two slides if you see uh, the introduction we have done then we will be today we'll be doing the visual studio architecture then hands on then all the things i will explain later what we mean by our level enumeration table and the practice sessions are also important see whenever we are uh, teaching something or whenever i'm showing you something you will also have the access to the environment and you can also do at the same time but again with that uh, and additionally i have kept few days for the practice sessions which will uh, help you to clear all your doubts and we can have those sessions on maybe one day or uh, two hours on a day so that will actually help you to uh, clear all your doubts so then if you go to uh, next day uh, next slide then we have our forms the visual part then our coding express plus classes uh, then we can we'll have a practice session then we can we'll learn more on the coding part like how we do uh, like small small operations because those operations will be needed for you actually and then we will be uh, learning the security basics which is very important for our uh, implementation how we create our securities and roles and responsibilities then we will have to learn on the report part because reports are the primary thing which the ERP is built on and also the workflows and web services and next finally we will show you how to do a deployment uh, create a package and everything so this is more or less the agenda uh, for our uh, operation for next few days uh, yeah, so what's new? I would say, uh, as I was explaining, uh, cloud hosted environment uh, development part is uh, actually being handled from the Visual Studio. So, whoever has done small .NET or that application, you will know that Visual Studio is a go to thing. So, whenever you go to your Visual Studio, you can write your .NET code or uh, write uh, your code and deploy a small web service or something. So, with cloud solution, our development will be completely on uh, Microsoft Dynamics Visual Studio and you can go and simply work on that Visual Studio but the coding language will be express plus which is very similar to any object oriented programming so if you know any other language so you can easily go and write that code 
and then we will be showing you the architecture which will discuss uh, more on tomorrow's uh, thing and web services overlaying all these things so we'll be discussing more tomorrow but uh, just to give you the brief overview what has been the new from the technical side uh, so it's like a more of a slide view where you can compare the older versions with the new versions which we discussed right and once we go and deep dive into the like our session i will show you like how we do those things and i'll explain okay previously what we used to do right so these things are important also just to know what we used to do in the previous versions and yeah the objective as i said uh, so create and customize create tables relationship the basic part so whenever like uh, i am expecting so if you are in the session you will be learning the basic you'll be having a hands-on session and then you can learn more and then you can if you want to have a career switch and work and all those things so you will actually have to uh, know the basics also right and then you can have a career switch and you have to crack the interviews also right so, so remember one thing so whenever you are actually uh, going into the interview so uh, you cannot just show that okay i have worked for maybe uh five to seven years in experience in dynamic 365 or something so you have learned and then you have worked and then when you are going into so you must know the basics and with the hands-on experience that will give you an added advantage in the interviews right so the basics is first very really important and then you can go and uh, go into the uh, more complex part right uh, yeah, so we will show you the visuals to do how to go into that. So before that uh, any questions uh, from the team I will take questions for five minutes and then we will start the visual studio session Hello Yeah, yeah actually I am right now in X2012 uh, whether we are going to discuss migration from 2012 to D365 means is there any uh, migration yes yes migration definitely i will talk about the concept so it will come into the later part of the training where we discuss more on the uh, packages deployment how we do that so that that migration we will discuss but yeah uh, as you should know that uh, i can discuss the concept and everything but uh, just to get a model from 2012 all those things will not be possible because like that needs a separate application altogether which is x2012 and uh, the, the those models store how we do that that process and everything i can show you uh, from slides and from lcs but uh, to do a hands-on and migration it will not be possible from the training but yeah the concept and how we do that how to the company will go comparison from okay, okay that is fine and is there any document to is provided uh, for and that uh, from Microsoft is there and also from some implementation partners are also having this document. Okay, thank you. As, as I said, uh, we'll be, uh, we'll be in the training also, so uh, be with it, be with us because it will take some time to cover the basics and then we'll go into that. So I check quickly check the Question uh, chat window, so whatever questions you have, let's say. Okay, Surya, so it's plus plus code is easy to learn. Yeah, it is easy. So if you uh, know any basic coding language like uh, C or any uh, programming language, small programming language, it is easy to learn because uh, syntaxes, as I said previously, earlier, syntaxes doesn't matter at all. All matter what matters is the logical sense what you have and how and why you are writing the code because if you know have a good logical mind if you know why you are writing the code syntaxes will not bother you trust me because i have uh, my syntaxes uh, like from all the directories uh, from all the google blogs all the things they will give you thousand line of code but you, if you do have the knowledge if you know how to write the code then it will be easy for you to uh, know the like increment the changes go through the course once again and explain us uh, explain me the screenshot of the uh, slide of fourth slide 
Uh, yeah, yeah, I show, I, I, I show you that. Yeah, the course, uh, if you are showing or like talking about the uh, like the course overview, like whatever the things we are covering. So more or less, uh, just if you see, we'll be covering all the topics. So I'll show you things. So let me just take the questions and when I go to the side, I'll show you. Any more questions? Sir, when will the classes start? Yeah, the class actually has already started uh, starting from today only uh, because uh, we are uh, starting from today because the first day is the visual studio will be small, will be going into the system and we'll show you so few stuff and uh, um, we'll be doing on a day to day basis. But uh, like uh, the other things like any administration stuff, you can just talk to the front office. So I think the visual path admin is there in the call. So you can drop her a text or the email and you can get to know them better. Okay. Okay. Uh, could you please show me that uh, a day one or which topics will you tell a day two like that? Is it there any content like that, sir? Day two, yes, day yes. three, day four, day five, which topics will you discuss? Uh, uh, did you give any content like that? Day one is uh, this uh, this content. We will I will tell day two this day three this day four this any content like that any content uh, available sir? Uh, yes, the schedule I have already showed you. So I'll, once I go back to the slide, I'll show you. Here it was mentioned as like one day one day like that. Uh, so the day uh, or the dates I have not mentioned actually because it can happen that sometimes uh, we can spill maybe today we are learning about this in one hour session we are not uh, done right so that is why I have given two days maybe or maybe in the hands on session we will spill out and you can maybe uh, we're having the session for three days or like three hours so that can also happen so that is why i've not mentioned the days properly but just on a rough estimate on the day but again that can be uh, increased based on the demand or how you are uh, capturing whatever i'm telling you so that i'll show you once i go back to the set but before that any other questions or should i continue uh, hi, good morning. Manish. Hi. Uh, one question. One. So, uh, before going to this uh, technical session, should we go ahead with uh, that, uh, uh, like a functional course, or we can go ahead with this direct? Uh, like, no, we you... don't have much experience on customizations. Okay, no, you have. You can go with this technical session. So, as I say, so technical and functional are both actually different sessions. Okay, so agenda of this training is to go with the dynamic certified technical session, and these two are completely say, parallel tracks. It's not uh, overlapping anywhere. So, if you want to do technical session, you will not know about as I said, like the basics of the technical, how we are building the system and everything but if you want to learn about the function they will start from one module right it cannot be like i go and start doing everything on the function so you have to start from maybe okay uh, i am doing my uh, inventory management or i am doing my sales cycle or i am doing my purchasing cycle so those things you have to find a track and they will start showing you from that but this technical session is just for the complete uh, technical understanding only Okay, so these are parallel steps and you do not have okay. an over. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so then we'll start on the session. So we'll quickly go through it and we'll continue on this tomorrow also. As I said, because <clears throat> it will be the, from the videos to the set, it will take some time. So let us start on the, uh, this session on this. So I'll quickly share my screen. Okay, uh, so once I go to the Visual Studio, so as I said, this is our main uh, development uh, uh, environment. What we do used to be, okay, where we will be doing our development. Yeah, before that, uh, somebody was asking about the uh, 
uh, agenda there is a training schedule so, yeah this is these are my training schedules so as i said if you see the time to complete is mentioned as day and if you want to take screenshot it's fine but again i can share that with you also so that will not be a problem from my side uh, so with, again as i said see if you see this there are half days it is showing so that i feel that i can discuss it on maybe uh, 30 minutes and 40 minutes so they base and face in my so then we can cover it on one day so if you see if you go and see this these classes express so what we have taken two days because i know that all these things it will at least need two days and there will be some uh, in the exercise reporting it will be complex in and you will be needing two days so all these things have uh, kept like this and if you see uh, these forms if, if i can cover it maybe in one day i can under like show you what are the patterns and i can just start creating forms but uh, just to give you uh, go through the pace just to give you an understanding of all the nuances, small, small details, I have kept it into this one will be the patterns and then we'll show you how to create this one. Uh, again, that is why based on this, I have kept these sessions and in the between we have kept few practice sessions also where we'll be completing, uh, we'll be doing some uh, small, small tasks which I'll be giving it to you and where we can uh, clear all your doubts also. Yeah. And apart from that, we will be having uh, ad hoc sessions also based on the report. So, yeah. so let us continue on the session. As I said, so Visual Studio, we have the Visual Studio environment where we are doing all our development. Uh, so this objective is like configure a Visual Studio development environment, how we can do that. That will be doing uh, maybe tomorrow or day after tomorrow. I'll just quickly show you today uh, with all the like key terminologies and the concepts. So that is very important because whenever you are starting, you need to know the terminologies and the concepts. So that is very important. And basic navigations, once you do a small hands and you will know, and the models and packages, what do I mean by that? Those things will be covered. Okay, yeah, so fleet management, you will see this term a lot because Microsoft, whenever they are actually giving you this product, they give you a small, uh, I would say, customized model that comes from Microsoft only. We do not develop that, which is called fleet management. So uh, that is, that is a, you can see a fleet management scenario. So once you open the environment also, you will see a Microsoft managed fleet management. So let me quickly show you that. Uh, so this is an online environment which we'll be using for practice purpose how to get into that i'll show you later as i said <clears throat> so it's just for today just for showing purpose that how we are doing that uh, so yeah <clears throat> so yeah if you, this is visual studio so let me uh, open that yeah so this environment whenever you are doing a practice session so if you see uh, this visual studio is already installed in the session so once you click right click and open this it opens up like this and if you see see microsoft already shows you okay fleet management this project is there correct so this project whatever you are seeing is being provided by microsoft and this is kind of a thing which microsoft gives you but our job will be to start by creating a new project and see whatever we can do okay so let me just uh, first click on this one and just to give you an idea so how it looks like the this this will be our like a working area and everything so let me get it open okay okay uh, so yeah so if you see these are my uh, this is a project uh, this is the project what we are going to do so yeah whoever is uh, very new to this uh, environment so uh, just to give you an idea so visual studio uh, this product or whatever you are seeing in the screen uh, this is something yeah, uh, this Visual Studio is something where we'll be doing all our changes, all our uh, customization in that, right? 
whatever you are seeing in the front end as an ERP, if you go to the back end, what we call as a back end, uh, then uh, this this is the back end or this is the thing where we are doing all our changes. Consider this as an uh, any website. So let's say if you have built a custom website at the back end you have a database right maybe that is a sql server or maybe some uh, mysql or whatever it is it's a database so in that database you are actually going and creating your data writing your business logic like okay if i click this button this will happen so those things are being maintained by maybe in sql server or you can write your logic in somewhere else but right now for dynamic 365 this is the place where we will be doing all the things right this is the place where we will be doing all our changes this, this is the first thing you should be knowing right uh, all these things are there if you open any visual studio and writing any dot net code you will see here also but the change what we can feel in dynamic 65 here in the extensions previously it was called dynamic 65 only in dynamic 65 we have all these things and if you view this this application explorers all, all this explorer i'll show you all these things but just to give you an idea this is where we'll be doing all the things in the in our system right and to how to do open this up how to configure this all this i'll show you in later but just to give you an idea this is the place where we'll be doing all our changes okay yeah uh, so uh, let me this is the demo, right what's this Okay, so as I was saying, so fleet management you will uh, get to see on a day to day basis. So, what is the purpose of this? All this Visual Studio. So, uh, whenever some take functional people or some uh, solutioning architect whoever comes and says okay these are the changes that needs to be done those needs to be configured so we have to create our models and packages we have to create our projects we have to create our elements we have to write our code we have to build it and deploy it this is the cycle like on a very broad basis right the, why these models and packages models are nothing but uh, where you are actually storing all the artifacts or where we are storing all the changes what we are doing so all the changes are actually being stored as an xml element nowadays previously it was not like that but right now what is the xml element uh, so whenever you are going into a system and creating a new class or creating a new form or creating a new table a database so those things needs to be saved somewhere right so those things are being saved in a model and that model is basically created by you is kind of a folder and how we can create the model we have two options we have overlaying an extension so that I will come to later so let me show you oh, yeah system requirement uh, as i was saying we can uh, so for development environment it's you can be hosted it can be hosted on cloud or it can be hosted locally also because microsoft dynamic 365 as i was saying is a cloud hosted environment uh, it has uh, capabilities like uh, you do not need to have your infrastructure but for some companies let's say as an example for banks right so for banks their data is very important right if you go to any bank if some of your friends also work in any bank if you ask them they will say you when whoever has deployed their servers website everything they have a local locally hosted database it's not that they are storing their database in a cloud because their data is very precious and they need to store it in their local system so they are not comfortable into having the data in the cloud so that risk they are not willing to take correct so that is why uh, microsoft dynamics also for clients they have uh, the option to uh, have a on-premise development where the database will be there but as i was showing you the architecture the uh, like the uh, Azure Active Directory credentials, those things needs to be created. That is the first thing. So your uh, database and everything will be on premise, but whatever you are deploying, all these things will run on cloud. So that is the structure. What is on premise? But very less number of uh, customers go for on premise development because uh, the cost is much more. Uh, the infrastructure you have to maintain and with, as this is a cloud application you are hosting on on-premise the cost uh, like shoots up 
and most of the clients they only goes for Microsoft Dynamics uh, for like Azure cloud and the, like the cloud hosted environment so they go for that as you are seeing so uh, so RAM and CPU but these are the this, this requirement if you see 16 GB to CPU this is a very basic requirement okay so if you have this and if you want to run this on on premise that that is not easy actually so if you go to any environment if you go to this if you go to system requirement you will see that the RAM and everything all these requirements if you go here and see the computer management and go to see the requirements uh, storage and everything so you will so, so see the requirement is like quite big okay so that is not uh, recommended to run this on your local system okay because if you go to the local disk you see uh, okay, see, see the, this is 126 GB and this is just the basic uh, system which is been implemented here so most of the cases if you do small customization your database and everything that takes uh, like at least 100 GB or 200 GB on and if you start doing transaction on a daily basis it takes more size okay and uh, with all your customization this size keeps on increasing and increasing so that is why as I was showing you so it's better to go for uh, a cloud Cloud hosted or Microsoft managed environment because you do not have the headache for the uh, any of the uh, infrastructure. So, yeah, yeah, this terminology concept. See these things. I'll show you these elements, models, and see two things very important. First thing is element, and the second is model. What do I mean by element? If I go and show you, and if I go you show you the application explorer. Uh, so uh, I'll show you like tell you what are the application is but whatever you are seeing here right all these things data type models code user interface if you see this expand users all these things menus menus extension all these things or if you uh, come and see here in under reports we have report data sources then if you go to data model you can see table view query all these things all these are elements okay all these things are elements so uh, if i show tell you okay you do a small customization uh, based on a requirement that i have to implement uh, a student uh, management system like where will be students will be coming they will be enrolling the database they will be entering their marks uh, based on the uh, based on the, the number of hours they have class there will be grades and everything so this you have to maintain that so how will do that you have to first create a table you have to store the data you have to write your logic you have to write your queries you have to write your code under course you have to write your classes all these things right all these things are elements what do I create the elements? I create the elements under this project. So this is a project. So if you see, this is a project, right? What do I create the project? I create the project under a model. So if you see, uh, this uh, this is showing uh, in the bracket. It's showing as a fleet management. This is a project. So if I show expand the properties, let me expand the properties see this is the project file and this is the project folder. if you see this is stored as a project which is fleet management entity project but if you see the project file it shows a fleet management entity so this a project entity is a entity is fleet management which is a model and where we are creating our project under the project we are creating the elements and we are doing all our changes so this is the structure so once you should see this structure so this is like works like this we create our element we create our element under the project the project is created under a model and that model is actually stored into a package because uh, let's think on this if you create a model you have to store it somewhere so that storage is basically happens under the package once you have this package that package needs to be deployed right and then you can see your changes in maybe your test environment or your production environment correct so that is the structure that we are following here so these things you should be very clear like what do i mean by model what do i mean by uh, all these things right so let's go into the yeah 
again so again i'm saying this is a structure so let's say some of you are creating a model so how we creating this models and everything i'll show you tomorrow but just to give you a quick understanding so let's say uh, i have a model one i have created so i am the solution architect and i am creating a model one so which is a x model one and i have three developers who are working for three projects one two three and under the three projects you are creating all your objects and doing all the changes similarly someone else who is creating a model two he has two developers working in the same model all these two models will be combined to a package which is the package one and that package needs to be deployed to see all the changes so this is the structure which i was doing first you create the elements in the project that project is into the model and that model is into a package correct similarly for uh, model 3 i can have two developers working and then we can create a package and that package if that's a dependency how this dependency i can later but uh, this div, we can have two packages development or we can create a one package from all these things okay this is the structure yeah naming convention as uh, we'll give you a small example so uh, this is just for the base practices. So whenever we do coding, we have to remember the base practice. So our consistency should be there. And these guidelines are generally provided by the company which you are working. So let's say you are working for uh, company maybe uh, TCS and they are implementing for maybe uh, take an example for Reliance and uh, under whenever you are doing all your changes so it cannot be like just uh, i start giving projects uh, randomly this though the no gaming convention because we cannot go and try to find those projects so that will be a nightmare because so many developers working on that so we and we have said those best practices we have to maintain that consistency and generally had a prefix with a company or project name. so let's say as, a, as an example uh, so if there is a development basic same element with db so we can create a table called db vehicle right or uh, take an example that we have a project for reliance and we tcs is implementing so it can you can give the name as tcs underscore db vehicle or something like that right so that it is easily understandable so this is a structure yeah so navigation area i'll explain more but just to quickly give you a view so this is the application explorer which is the main navigation area where you can see all the objects right this is the first thing then we have all these things like the solution explorer where do we have this this is the solution explorer the, our all the projects and everything where you can do our build then we have the properties window is simple uh, then we have our uh, so our error windows and everything all these things it will be there error list output window toolboxes all these things will when you work we'll know more but again uh, if you just remember two three things are very important which we do on a day-to-day -day basis hundred times maybe in a day first is our application explorer then is your solution explorer then your properties uh, in the previous version if you uh, do not have a uh, like a model and all these concepts are not there uh, this is a new thing which you have implemented with dynamic 365 but right now remember whenever you are doing any changes you first create a project you first add your elements and that projects again should be assigned to a model which is very important under that model you can get all the elements and then you can do all the changes so this is very important the solution explorer and the application area okay <clears throat> so models overlaying all the customization as so uh, this part we uh, will be covering tomorrow but i'll be uh, just give you a quick overview so once you go and create a mercy this fleet management this is using an isv model which is a third party model uh, so whenever you have a model so microsoft has itself given so many models okay but whenever you are creating a new model you should know that I can create a model in two ways. I have an existing model. I can create an extension of it. By extension, I mean I can go and create my changes and keep the changes of the Microsoft, whatever Microsoft provide aside. So that let's say Microsoft in the model, they have 30 new classes and they have written logic for 100 different tables. Okay. If you're creating an extension, 
your logic your classes tables will not coincide or overlap with the changes what microsoft has done what is the benefit of it if tomorrow microsoft comes with an update it will not touch the part what you have written the code you have written it will only update whatever uh, microsoft has written the code or whatever changes microsoft has done which is a uh, maybe 30 classes 100 tables those things right your changes will be as it is it will not be touched with the update with uh, any any kind of update second thing part is overlaying overlaying means actually you are building on top of the microsoft model so that means you have the option just to go into the system and do a complete change of the microsoft model so that means if microsoft has written a class uh, which is affecting two tables you with overlaying you have the option to go into that code you can actually go and change that code that option or you can just write something uh, on top of that code Okay, so these things are uh, very important to understand what is overlaying and what is extension. So this will be very basic things. I'll explain more, but if you have an idea, so extension is always recommended, 100% all the time is recommended because we are building as an extension of the Microsoft model. And overlaying is actually you are overlapping with the Microsoft model and which is not at all recommended because that can hamper your upgrade process, future version upgrade, binary updates, all these things can be a big, big uh, problem. So whenever overlaying, so Microsoft also gives you warning. So I'll show you whenever we're creating the models. Okay, uh, so this part again will show you when we we'll show, show you how an overlaying extension I explained, but tomorrow we'll be explaining more. Uh, so we'll connect tomorrow at the same time and we'll have the session on the architecture and we'll continue with the visual studio models and everything okay thanks everyone have a good day